Let's start by seeing what are the ingredients required. Now, I'm going to be using half a wati of all these flowers. That is, this is the size of the wati, a regular wati. Now, I'm using a half a cup of wati of bhajra flour, natsrani flour and besan or chana dal. I also have half a wati of jwar, jwari flour, rice flour as well as whole wheat flour. That is the flour we use to make chapatis and poris. Then I also have 1 teaspoon of cumin powder or jeera powder, 2 teaspoons of dhania powder, coriander, 1 teaspoon of red chilli powder, some salt to taste and also 1 uh, quarter spoon of ova or ajwain. Now I have kept a, uh, some oil to heat that is called mohan. We are going to use about 2 tablespoons of that oil and we are also going to use about uh, a cup of water which I have kept to boil. Now the first step is to mix all these flours together very very well. Now these are all ready made flours but you can also actually uh, you know buy the bajra grain, uh, wash it, dry it and uh, then make a peat or flour. So now I've just added all the three powders that is the dhania powder, the jeera powder and the red chilli powder along with the ajwain or the ova and then I'm going to add some salt to taste. Now you can also add some sesame seeds or teal. Now I'm going to be pouring this hot oil which we call mohan and again mix everything well together. And now I'm adding this one cup of water a little at a time and mixing everything. The water has to be boiling hot. So mix everything well. And then once uh, you're able to uh, ma handle this flour, that is the water has cooled down a bit, you can start kneading it into a soft dough. What you can do is you can just put, you know, a fan. If you have a fan in the room, just put the fan on and help the cooling process. And then it's very easy. You can just knead everything and it all comes together very well. And then you get this soft, nice dough. Now, one thing which is very important is let the dough rest for about 30 minutes. Now, after 30 minutes, the dough is ready. I've just lined a plate with some uh, baking paper. You can also use regular plastic. Now, I'm going to take a very small bit of the dough and I'm going to, uh, I put some oil on the rolling board as well as on my hands. And I'm just going to roll it uh, into this thin stick like or twig shape and then we're just going to roll it like this into concentric circles to form this kadbori. Now one thing you have to keep in mind is don't let the uh, you know the borders touch each other leave a little bit of gap because that helps to fry the kadbori completely and you don't have any raw bit when you're deep frying this. So in this way you can prepare the kadbori and then just keep it on a plastic a sheet or a uh, or a baking paper so that it doesn't stick uh, to the plate and in this way you can uh, continue making the kadboris with the dough friends I have prepared all the kadboris. Now uh, I am just rolling them in a little bit of sesame seeds. This is completely optional. You can uh, totally omit the tear or the sesame seeds or you can even add them to the dough while you're making the dough itself. So I just added just put it a little bit of uh, just dipped it roughly 
And now I've kept my uh, oil for heating, for deep frying. We don't want the oil to be smoking hot. So keep it on a low to medium flame and then just uh, deep fry uh, these katboris till they become a nice dark brown color. So your oil should not be piping hot. It should not be smoky, but it should be just, the you know, a little bit hot. And you should fry this on a low to medium flame, not on a high flame. It does take some time. But then you'll see the end result is lovely and, you know, really crispy. So in this way, I fried all the kadboris and then I drained the excess oil on some kitchen napkin. Here, your katboris are all ready. I personally love...